Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and uh, this is the China Taiwan focus. So uh, nowadays uh, the biggest hype uh, and you know excitement or, or you know worry is actually about uh, Pelosi's visit or potential visit to Taiwan and uh, China is getting uh, really feisty uh, over this issue and they have threatened uh, military action uh, but did not specify what kind of military action that they will take. So and uh, we'll be going through the sequence of events uh, coming from uh, mid-June all the way to today. And <clears throat> you'll see a pattern developing. And you will see that the what is the exact thing that has been happening over this past two, three months? What has been developing? And um, you will start to realize you know, why this tension uh, is really serious and why all the Western powers, uh, including even Japan and, and all the regional uh, countries are actually very worried about this issue and they are taking it, taking it very seriously. It's not just about one old auntie going to Taiwan, but uh, it's a lot more things than you can imagine. So if you did not follow the Taiwan China issue, um, this will be the perfect episode for you to you know get up to date of exactly what happened over the past two three months that led us to this very moment at the brink of possible conflict between china and china uh yeah actually taiwan's real name uh, real country name is not taiwan but it's actually republic of china china is people's republic of china so they are, they are both china which is why there is this uh, idea of one china policy Welcome back and uh, let's start off with something not so uh, tense uh, but might be very tense to the Taiwanese. On the 17th of June, China launches their third aircraft carrier, the Fujian. And this aircraft carrier is a bit different from the previous two. The previous two, they actually bought it from, I think, Russia and uh, they are the ram, uh, they have this ram that the, the plane take off. This is the first uh, aircraft carrier that looks like the American ones that is totally flat and actually take off through a catapult system. So the Fujian will join the Shandong uh, and Liaoning, the two other some uh, aircraft carriers that the Chinese bought. Oh, sorry, not from Russia, but from Ukraine. And uh, in 1998, and uh, refitted domestically. So they're still trying to, you know, hone their abilities to operate carriers and integrate them into better groups, uh, which the United States have been doing for decades. So the launch demonstrates the military capabilities, uh, the increasing military capabilities uh, at a time of rising tension with the United States over Taiwan as well as South China Sea. So uh, the, the Fujian is actually named after the province of Fujian. This entire area is Fujian. And uh, there's another, another word for Fujian is actually Hokkien. So in uh, Fujian language is actually called Hokkien and Hokkien actually simply means Fujian so uh, so there's some, some tidbits you now because I can speak Hokkien so anyway um, so on the 19th something mind-blowing happened a leaked recording of top secret military meetings on Taiwan invasion plans have been, have been leaked and uh, this uh, audio is not a very short one. It's actually a very, very long one. I heard a bit of it. I can't stand it. It's just way too long. And um, so this audio is of top secret talks between military commanders and they detail the invasion plans in involving 140,000 troops. And um, so re released by this uh, organization called the Luther Media or Lut Media. I don't know if this is Chinese or English and purports to be a meeting of the Chinese Communist Party chief who discussed you know, putting parts of China into war footing because when they're going to go to war, uh, multiple provinces uh, provinces will be activated you know, to, to join the war effort 
And uh, so they are discussing, you know, how to you know prepare for this final battle to gain control of Taiwan and the South China Sea. So, which means that this battle plan is not just about Taiwan; it's about the entire South China Sea because China knows it very clearly that should they go to war for for Taiwan or South China Sea, the entire they will be basically going to war with the entire world essentially. So, or at least the Western world. So, or the pro West world. So. So if you're going to go for Taiwan, you might as well go for South China Sea as well. So among those that are present, uh, including the Guangdong military region's commander, uh, Zhou He, General Zhou He, the translated transcript of the uh, alleged meeting also includes the discussion of proposed mobilization centered around Guangdong. Uh, Guangdong is actually uh, this area here, uh, which Hong Kong is part of. Uh, this Guangdong just next to uh, Fujian. Guangdong is also known, as, known previously as Canton. So the Cantonese, you know, if you are American, the, chi the, the Chinese that you hear in USA, they are mostly uh, Cantonese. So this is from this region, the dialect from this region. So, and uh, it stated 140,000 personnel, 953 ships and uh, 1,653 sets of unmanned equipments will be put into action so this is quite a substantial force in fact this is actually a pretty much uh, a huge uh, invasion invading force to take taiwan i would say 140,000 seems to be you know low on the low side if you're talking about invading taiwan itself uh, because uh, taiwan do have a substantial military and uh, they do have still quite a number of reserves that uh, that previously served in their conscription, which was already uh, cancelled. There's no more conscription service uh, within uh, Taiwan now, uh, but they still have many of these uh, soldiers, pre probably from my generation, you know, they are in their thir 30s and they are still able to fight. So if they recall the reserves, you know, Chinese, uh, Taiwanese military can still be quite big. Uh, however, this is probably only the invading force this is an invasion force and i believe <clears throat> should they have a major bridgehead i think the the chinese military will actually you know activate even more troops uh, to take taiwan so and and since then uh since the recording leak, leaked there is no more talk you know it things just went really quiet uh eerily and then we start to have uh uh, China, you know, sending a huge armada of airplanes uh, into the Taiwanese defense zone. So, uh, on the 21st of June, 17 fighters and 6 uh, H-6 bombers, uh, as well as some other planes, uh, ent entered the, this, around this area. So, some of these uh, planes flew in an area northeast of the, of the Pratas. Pratas is this uh, island area. Where there is this uh, air base, Tong Sa Tao, Pratas Island. This is a Taiwanese controlled island, and they, f they flew very near to it. And uh, they flew into the Bashi ch uh, Channel, and then which uh, separates between Taiwan and Philippines, which is uh, they flew through here and, bef and into the Pacific before turning back to China from the route they came. So this is the largest incursion uh, since uh, May 30th, where there was 30 Chinese aircraft. The largest is 39 aircraft from the on the January January of the 23rd. So, uh, so the Chinese have been you no know, testing testing the you no know, the readiness of the Taiwanese air force. So on the 24th, uh, China banned the Taiwanese grouper fish import. So. They really banned a uh, Taiwanese pineapple the year before, so they are, so probably the the Chinese found uh, another source for grouper fish. They decided to ban it, ban the Taiwanese one. So uh, so continue to you know squeeze Taiwan and cause uh, economic losses due to the embargo. So the Taiwanese uh, grouper sector is profitable. Uh, so this will actually you know. This restriction from China will actually put pressure on the Taiwanese uh, economy. 
So they claim the Chinese custom claim that they found a uh, illegal substance and high quantity of quantities of other medicine in grouper imported from Taiwan. So this is the reason why they embargoed. So the Taiwanese say that this is embargoed purely for political reasons. So uh, tension, tension. On the twenty fourth of June, on the same day, the the People's Liberation Army Navy vessels, Ilan and Yongguni. Yonaguni, sorry, wrong. Sail between Ilan, Ilan and uh, Yonaguni for the Yonaguni for the first time to enter the Pacific Ocean. So Yonaguni is actually here. This island, uh, this belongs to the Japanese. So this is the. So they wrote that this is the first time a uh, Chinese Navy sail between these two, uh, Ilan Tang County and the uh, Yonaguni Island, and and uh, they. The, the 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 course they took was close to the islands of the Taiwanese uh, eastern coastal region, including Jilong, Ilan, and Hualien. So basically, they travel down this way. So this is a uh, surprising. This make the news because this is uh the first time they travel through this path. Usually they travel through uh this area here, if I'm not wrong. So that uh create some uh, disturbance you now to the Taiwanese. And then on the 25th, there, the Chinese conducted a live firing exercise at the Bei, Beibu, Beibu Gulf. So the military drills, uh, according to the CCP news uh, paper, People's Daily, they said that uh, they will conduct live fire, uh, live fire shooting exercise and uh, from the June 21st to June 30th. So entry will be prohibited. So they'll be like, the this is called Beibu one Beibu Gulf. And then they'll be firing into the ocean, I guess. So that happened. On the same day, uh, something you no know, uh, kind of a shock Taiwan. Two Taiwanese uh officers has been uh, arrested for creating a spy network for China and violating national security laws. So. Uh, one of them is a retired major general, another one is a retired lieutenant colonel. So the file, uh, court filing stated the two officers had helped a citizen of Hong Kong named Sir and uh, had links with the Central Military Commission of China. So Sir is uh, working with an organization in Guangdong province in the southeast China known to be associated with CMC. He he came to Taiwan with the aim of connecting with officers in the military. And for this, the Hong Konger posed as a businessman and attempted to manipulate a few retired officers with free meals and trips. So Qian and Wei fell into the trap and uh, they tried to persuade the former deputy defense minister, very uh, ambitious of them, to Chang, uh, Chang Che Ping, Chang Che Ping or something, to join them, but they efforts were in vain and I believe that this was the part where they got caught uh, because kind of stupid to go for a politician so so this actually shocked uh, Taiwan because this is a really high profile two very senior soldiers retired soldiers have committed this uh, treason so so then we didn't have much things happening uh, since until the 15th of July. So the US State Department approved uh, the potential sale of uh, military technical assistance, uh, assistance to Taiwan worth 108 million. So this assistance uh, is mainly uh, requested from the Taiwanese. Uh, they need spares and uh, re repair parts for tanks, combat, uh, combat vehicles. They also need the US government and contractor technical and logistical support. So it will contribute to the, so according to you know, the Pentagon, they say that the sale will contribute to the sustainment of the Taiwanese vehicles, small arms, combat weapon system, and logistical support items. So, so basically, you know, they're trying to you know, get things to be repaired and you know, ready to be ready. So this is, this, what is significant means the Taiwanese military is now trying to improve its readiness. Um, so, so they probably, you know, have a, did a, a vet through of all the equipments and everything and they realize a lot of things is broken i guess so they 
they actually you know requested for this uh, 108 million it's not a lot of money uh it's mainly to do maintenance to you know get their all their equipments and vehicles up to readiness then uh we have uh the europeans coming to the taiwan so on the night 19th of july uh around half a month ago uh the vice president of the e european parliament nicola beer have visited taiwan so th this is the first official visit of a uh, uh, mep of her rank so this is a very very high ranking of uh official from uh, the european parliament and they say that they will they will work together to address global issues and uh, because they are all a family of democracies so this so the statement said taiwan's bloom is also europe uh, europe's bloom we won't turn a blind eye to china's threat to taiwan europe was late for hong kong we won't be late for taiwan so i'm not sure you know what this is supposed to mean uh, i'm not even sure what can europe do for hong kong uh, but i'm quite sure they can do a lot more for taiwan because hong kong is not exactly a country so i don't think anyone dares to do much for hong kong i think i would say so beer arrived in taipei for three days and aims to strengthen strategic cooperation in the light of russian invasion of ukraine and uh, china's involvement in hong kong so this is the first sign of you no know, something big is happening and then uh, we have top officials coming to talk and uh, to try to find out what the hell is happening so on the 25th of july uh, six days later the ta taiwanese launched a major air raid exercise uh, which uh, includes the capital taipei so everyone the roads are empty you no know, then the people are ordered to stay indoors so they prepare for the air raid uh, exercise in the event of a chinese attack so this this uh, exercise is all you know inspired by the situation in ukraine so the Russian invasion of Ukraine renews debate in Taiwan on, on how to best to react in the event of an attack uh, in the midst of a step up in Chinese military maneuvers around the island. So this part is where you just now when we talk about the airplanes flying around, the ships going through places where they have never went through before and uh, the Taiwanese are very worried. So and especially when they see how the war have turned out in Ukraine, uh, they realize that they need to do something, which is why they have raised the alert level uh, despite this they haven't seen anything and they've now started to do more military exercise and really really very public ones uh, this so they they carry out street evacuation drills and uh, these exercises have been cancelled for the past two years of, uh, due to COVID-19 so uh, now it's the it's the ninth time it's the right time now to actually you know restart all these exercise uh, as then the Japan uh, ex-defense ministers visited uh, Taiwanese president uh, Tsai Ing-wen in Taipei. So according to this, this report by Japan Times, they say that uh, the Tsai Ing-wen, this is Tsai Ing-wen. So the, in, in Chinese, it's actually pronounced as Tsai Ing-wen. So, uh, so the Taiwanese president expressed hope that the ties with Japan could be further bolstered when, they, when she spoke to the former Japanese defense minister Shigeru, uh, Shigeru Ishiba, Sh Shigeru, Shigeru Ishiba. So the, so the Ishiba led a bipartisan delegation of Japanese lawmakers focused on national security. So, and then they arrived in Taiwan for the four-day visit. Uh, and then he told Tai that many Japanese people agree with uh, Shinzo Abe's command that any contingency concerning Taiwan would be in an emergency for Japan and the Japan-US Security Alliance. So this is the Japan Times version. And then we have another version of the same visit. This actually, you know, puts things a little differently. So this is Japan Times. So this is from a Japanese perspective. Uh, of course, the article is much longer. So you can you can go to the defensepoliticsasia.com and then you scroll to the map, the world map on the homepage. You can actually find this icon here and you can go and take a look at the original article. And on by dailypioneers.com, they wrote, oh, this is by, actually by AP actually. So uh, they, rep, they duplicated the article from AP, Associated Press. So this one wrote differently. This one is actually Japan. Uh, 
officially sent a, a high level delegation of a group of Japanese lawmakers, including two defense, former defense ministers, uh, to meet with the Taiwanese president in a rare high level visit to discuss regional security. So this actually puts things in a very, very different light, which means that this is actually a defense meeting that the Japan officially sent uh, a high, high level delegation to come to talk about defense matters. So the delegation is led by same thing, the former defense minister Shigeru Ishiba. And they want and but here they wrote they wanted to reach an agreement with Taiwan on defense issue and to prepare for any potential conflict in the region and also of course to seek to prevent the conflict from breaking out so so you can see this this article totally you know is a very different uh, angle uh, when they talk about this visit we need to think ahead about what kind of situation could happen and what kind of laws and agreements we should prepare what kind of armaments we could use so they are even talking about armaments uh, in the prepared remarks on at the presidential office we need to work together to reach consensus on this ahead of anything that could happen this is a warning from the japanese which means that in the under undercurrent some things that is happening you know from not not seen on the surface something serious is actually happening that's why they are making such a statement so uh, so we have to look you know beyond just the surface words so ishiba noted that japan is working closely with the us to prevent conflict in the indo-pacific saying that the defense allies had no choice but to prepare this is also another statement that is very dangerous which means that something really really serious is developing and japan is aware of it the united states is aware of it and they are coming to tell taiwan about it and to tell Taiwan to prepare. So that's the Japanese visit. So uh, on the same day, on the 28th, Xi Jinping was uh, talking, talking to, oh, sorry, was talking to Biden on the phone. So Xi Jinping, the Chinese, Chinese president, uh, wants Biden not to play with fire. Those play with fire will eventually get burned. Xi was quoted telling Biden uh, and then he he hopes that the US side fully understands that then uh, Xi Jinping uh, also re 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 uh, reinforce uh, or reassert the Chinese position that their their con the position on Taiwan issue is consistent and then came the you know very irritating uh, way of talking that the firm will of over 1.4 billion Chinese people to firmly safeguard Chinese national sovereignty and territorial integrity. But it's like, he can't really speak for 1.4 billion uh, Chinese people. From my understanding, most civilians don't really care about politics. Um, but they like to use this because the population is huge. It makes it sounds really dramatic. And uh, yeah, so, but they repeat this really, really often. So it, it kind of lost the power. So Biden say yes, yes, yes. So, so Biden reassures Xi Jinping that the Thai, U.S. Taiwan policy has not changed. So Biden, uh, President Biden of the United States, uh, underscored that the United States policy has not changed, and that the United States strongly opposes unilateral efforts to change the status quo or undermine peace and stability across the Taiwan Strait. So, so you no know, status quo, I guess. And then uh, Pelosi went on to do something else. So, uh, Nancy Pelosi, the House Speaker of the of the United States, uh, from the Democratic Party uh, from California, is leading an official congressional delegation to Asia. Uh, so they are, although it's unclear whether the trip will include a stop in Taiwan. So one of the stop, uh, one of the sources. I don't know why U USA always have leakers. Uh, the the leak show uh the source say that uh they saw the itinerary and listed Taiwan a visit as tentative. The lead the trip will have uh visits to Japan, South Korea, Malaysia and Singapore. So Bloomberg News uh first reported that the Pelosi's delegation is departing on Friday and uh the last day of the house that is in session before a month long August recess. So then 
so the trip is confirmed she actually do flew they flew to hawaii first then i think she went to i think not sure if they went to grom she's now currently in singapore where i am and uh i please don't tell me to go and look for her uh, i don't have the clearance so coming to 30th of july which is actually uh saturday i guess is it saturday uh yeah i think so so the chinese in an attempt to you know warn uh, pelosi against coming to taiwan they conducted a snap live firing exercise suddenly they just suddenly announced it uh and then uh, it's off uh it's off pintang island uh, so this is pintang ping tan tao ping tan island so not sure in which part of the islands uh, they started to shoot wildly into the ocean from 8 a.m to 9 p.m and then the marine time safety administration uh warned ships to avoid the area and so so this uh, according to this report they say that uh, the exercise usually involves artillery so there's n there's no indication uh, whether the exercise will include uh, missiles fighter planes or other weapons according to videos that came out um they simply just fire randomly into the ocean blah, 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 blah. And after that uh, there are some reports that uh some of the shells actually uh went into taiwanese territory or maybe even very close to the island not sure uh the distance from here to here is around 120 kilometers so if uh the russian uh if the chinese have high mass they probably can hit uh them uh, i'm just joking of course the chinese have uh, long range missiles so they they just fire a lot of stuff uh in this way and then took some very uh crazy videos and the videos are actually taken by uh civilians so while they are firing civilians on other areas they actually you know see shells flying off you know into the distance so uh, quite dramatic quite dramatic then uh, the taiwanese held their own um uh, massive military exercise so Tsai uh oversees uh, oversaw the island's naval drills and praised the military re resolve for defense so this is part of the annual han guang or han guang i'm not sure i think it's han guang so it's defense like i believe i, I haven't seen the chinese word for this name so the han guang exercise is the annual exercise uh, so 20 warships were deployed that include frigates destroyers they fire shells to intercept and attack a potential invading force off the island's northeast coast so the then fleets of f-16s and uh Qing Guo fighters fighter planes took on to the air to launch airstrike so time when was on the u.s kit class missile destroyer as she oversaw the drill i i'm not sure what this is supposed to mean is she on the u.s navy ship i think so so the five day is a five day military drill and then uh, one of the drills involved uh in the opening the the mouth of the tansui river where they simulated a chinese uh attempt to blockade or conquer conquer this river area and uh it's a uh, it's i think it's the biggest uh exercise in uh for a long time so Ch taiwan is really really worried about this and they are doing this so on the 30th of Ju july so a lot of things happening uh, around these few days you can see all the dates is like suddenly there's just a massive massive uh increase in the things that is happening around uh, around taiwan 30th of july this is a significant thing because the u.s lawmakers have introduced a bill similar to the land list land list act to arm taiwan so a group of democrats and republicans have introduced a bill that will authorize the biden administration to create a new military aid program for taiwan modeled after the 1940s land lease act that allowed the u.s to arm the allied powers during world war ii this bill resembles the legislation uh, recently passed to boost weapon supplies to ukraine it's named the taiwan democracy defense land lease act it will authorize the president to land or lease weapons and military equipment to taiwan which taiwan would have to pay over a 12 years 12 year period I actually do not know if the ukrainian ones would pay over how long hmm, i should go and check about it so for for the taiwan one the taiwan taiwanese have to pay i think the ukrainian ones uh they may not need to pay uh, that's what i think the so the bill's name and the wording 
uh, is very similar to the Ukrainian one. The Ukrainian one was the Ukraine, Ukraine Democracy Defense Land Lease Act. So this is one is the Taiwan Democracy Defense Land Lease Act. So which so uh, the Ukrainian one was uh, passed in Congress with no resistance. So I believe this Taiwan one will be similar. So if this bill, since they are introduce, introducing this bill, I believe this bill will actually uh, get voted on and uh, slightly well, if it's get voted on it's going to be signed into law uh, because this will make the military industrial complex really really happy and uh, if you want to buy stocks maybe it's time to buy uh, some military military no no this is not a investment advice please do not listen to me I have, I know nothing about investment I do not do investments so anyway uh, on the 20th 30th of July you know, a lot of things happening, you know, all big things. Switzerland suddenly out of the blue um, told a newspaper interview that, so this is the head of the Swiss agency that implements economic sanction. So this guy, uh, he's the state secretary, secretariat for economic affairs, SECO, director, Marie Gabriel Ishnichin's French I, I think this is how you pronounce it. So this person say that uh, he he or she, I think it's a he or I think it's a she, Marie Gabriel, I think it's a she. So she expects uh, the neutral country, which is Switzerland, to adopt any punitive measures the European Union launches against China if it invades Taiwan. So, and this, and I have tried to search, the European Union have not talked anything about sanctions on China, on China yet. But this came out of nowhere, and she suddenly just say that this, if the European Union going to launch uh, sanctions against China, uh, Switzerland will follow. So, so, so she she was uh, asked by New Zuscher Zetong, <laughs> I don't know how this pronounce this, if Switzerland would adopt EU sanctions against China, and she, she said, I strongly be believe that we would adopt such sanctions. However, so there's a however sanctions in the case of china would be far more drastic than the sanctions against russia because economic relations are much more important therefore there would be a greater discussion in the eu and the united states as well as in switzerland than there were in russia i hope we will never come to that and this also shows that uh ukraine is actually not so important so so zelensky must be really really sad uh, by this statement because he had been trying so hard to back and uh back and you know threaten everyone into giving them more aid and adding more sanctions on russia then suddenly this girl just came and said no they right off they will be you know doing more for taiwan than ukraine then on the 31st of july while uh, nancy pelosi is in hawaii she finally tweeted uh i'm leading I'm leading a congressional delegation to the Indo-Pacific to reaffirm America's unshakable commitment to our allies and friends in the region. In Singapore, Malaysia, South Korea and Japan, we will hold high-level meetings to discuss how we can further our shared interests and values on her Twitter. So this is the first uh, official confirmation of where Nancy Pelosi will be going in her Asia trip. So so the first stop is actually singapore and then uh i believe af tomorrow after maybe a lunch or something she'll probably head over to malaysia so because you will have two days stays in singapore so as as pelosi had uh, arrived in singapore uh china actually made a statement so this is on the CGTN, uh, the official one of the official Chinese media. So, uh, the foreign ministry said that China will take the form, uh, firm and strong countermeasures to safeguard sovereignty and territorial integrity, and then that the Chinese military will not sit will not sit back if U.S. House Representative Rep Representative Speaker Nancy Pelosi visits Taiwan. So. Uh, this speaker of the foreign ministry of China said that the Chinese side has repeatedly made clear to the U.S. side our serious concern over Pelosi's potential visit to Taiwan and our firm, firm opposition to the visit. We are fully prepared for any eventuality, uh, he said. 
and uh, and then he started to say you know, some other uh, useless things. And uh, China demands that Joe Biden will not support Taiwan independence and should not have arranged Pelosi's visit to Taiwan. He stressed, and I actually don't think Pelosi's visit is arranged by Joe Biden. Uh, I don't think Joe Biden have jurisdiction over uh, Nancy Pelosi's uh, decision to go anywhere. So I don't think that's the case. So on a on a different article, uh, it was written of, of of the same thing, uh, in a different angle slightly, that. Is this is the same? Uh, they were the the same. No, but this one, this part is the same. But then they added the playing with fire will set yourself on fire. So he repeat he repeated a comment by Xi Jinping, uh, who told Joe Biden in the phone. Then this in this article they added uh, something more, that we would like to warn the U.S. again that China is standing by and the Chinese Chinese People's Liberation Army will never sit idly by. And will take resolute and strong countermeasures to defend its sovereignty and territorial integrity. So doubling down their warning to Pelosi visiting Taiwan. And immediately they announced that they will be holding live fire drill in the Bohai Sea or Bohai Sea. Is it how, what, what do you call this sea? Bohai, I think it's Bohai. Yeah, Bohai Sea. Although high is actually means C, so it's poor C only. So anyway, um, the military, this military uh, live firing will be conducted from August the first to fourth. So this is just out, just inside of the yellow, uh, inside of the yellow sea. This is the yellow sea here. So this is their own inner sea. And then. Uh, this in the same report they they have another one which is talking about south china sea so on the so they they will also hold military exercise in the south china sea and um they say this is this is a very short statement they say they will conduct military exercises in part of the south china sea from the second to the sixth so uh marking out off limit water areas so not sure i didn't saw the map where they will be actually doing the exercise i believe it's between paracel island and uh paracel islands and uh hainan hainan island this is hainan island so probably around this area so let me say oh i actually missed something it's okay never mind i just do this Meow, 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 meow. Where is it now? Where am I? Where am I now? So it's okay after this. So then, uh, rumors came out just now, um, that Pelosi will be visiting Taiwan, according to local media reports. So several Taiwan media outlets reported late, which is several hours ago, that um. Uh, Ta uh, Nancy Pelosi will visit Taiwan on Tuesday and spend the night in Taipei citing unidentified sources so i believe this tuesday is not today it's actually you know next week's tuesday because she still needs to visit uh, malaysia south korea and japan so the liberty times newspaper said pelosi was scheduled to visit taiwan parliament on wednesday morning before continuing her asia trip oh that means, that means she's going to go to taiwan today because today is tuesday Mm, okay united daily news also cited unnamed sources uh, saying related officials were told to receive pelosi who is set to arrive in the capital of taipei on tuesday evening which is uh maybe 12 hours to 15 hours from now yeah at, at the soonest and spend the night there so the foreign uh, taiwan foreign ministry however have no comments on the report uh and have no further information to share with the media so the taiwanese government do not acknowledge uh, this this leak of information and i think this is a very terrible leak because it does present uh, some kind of uh, security issue for the americans and uh so regardless the taiwanese high mili the taiwanese military went into high alert 
with leave being cancelled and air defenses preparing for war this is the word they use i think preparing for war is mistranslation in chinese we call 备战 备战 is actually prepare for war but it simply also means yeah it just means prepare for war yeah in the chinese way it doesn't sound so scary it's more like you know be prepared you know on stand guard that kind of meaning it's not really war war uh, unless they say in chinese 准备打战, then uh to, then that will be quite terrible you know <laughs> so the taiwanese troops are reported to prepare for war after air defenses were briefed so there are also reports emerged that leave has been cancelled for some officers and military so things are getting serious if this is true then the trip uh that this you no know, this rumor that Ty uh, pelosi will be arriving taiwan in maybe 12 12 to 15 hours time or even 16 hours time might actually be true uh, so so um meanwhile so so that's you know that's a scary part finish so meanwhile uh the the cgtn uh, the chinese uh, news media reported uh in part of their article about china celebrating the 95th anniversary of the founding of the people's liberation army they mentioned that the defense budget will increase by 7.1 percent this year to 1.45 trillion yuan or 229 229 billion dollars for 2022 so maintaining single digit growth for the seven consecutive year this is important uh which means that the growth of the defense budget is actually in a in actually a, in a not linear fashion but actually in a uh what is this called quant uh uh, whatever was the i forgot the word just escaped me so anyway this is according to the report on the draft central and local budgets for 2022 submitted to the national legislature that means this is actually not passed yet but of course it's going to be passed and uh the the increase will be quantum so it's going to get more and more and more and more because it's percent uh it's percent on percent percent on percent so uh it's getting more and more scary and uh remember the military exercise the uh, Shandong aircraft carrier has been reported by Osin to have left the Hainan naval dock. So you can, in fact, you can even see the the aircraft carrier on the here on the Google Maps, and uh, they have left the naval port. The danger about this uh, military exercise is that but they say that the military exercise will be in South China Sea. But remember, all the way in the beginning when we talked about the leak plan. The leak plan they mentioned invasion of taiwan and securing of uh south china sea here so do not underestimate the all these you no know, move maneuvers in this mini, uh, military maneuvers is very dangerous because excess usually exercises will turn into operation so um so you no know, the us is definitely being careful so I just now I re, re, I arranged this slightly wrongly, but it's okay. Um, the the rim pack, the rim of Pacific exercise, uh, they actually took took a group sail photo. So, um, twenty six nations, thirty eight ships, three submarines, and more than thirty unmanned systems, approximately one hundred seventy aircraft, and two and twenty five thousand personnel participated in the rim pack from June twenty nine to August fourth. So the uh the this exercise is about to finish soon which is why they actually tried they took this uh photo photo op uh where they have this uh crazy photo of 37 ships and two submarines as well as aircraft flying together you know or moving together and then took photos of it so the impact exercise is a training opportunity to foster and sustain international relationship between participants and to help perfect interoperability so ending on thursday so um this exercise is definitely also you know putting some pressure on china uh because there's so many countries involved and then uh while so while the the china uh, the taiwanese uh military is on high alert there is also reports that at least three u.s aircraft carrier uh with dog years so 
actually there's only one aircraft carrier but there's uh there's two big decks and amph amphibious ships uh uss uh, america and uss tripoli uh, but both of them actually have aircraft they have f-35 uh b's lightning two joint strike fighters on them so so that that technically makes them uh, also aircraft carriers so three capital ships they are all in the vicinity of taiwan so the ship so the pentagon uh downplay the significance they say that uh, the ships are operating normally in the region and uh, we will not detail force protection measures for the visit of the of the third highest ranking u.s official to the region however uh, the ships escort and air wings in the region were were prepared to linger as a contingency option so uh the three vessels um show you one is here just off philippines uh this one is the aircraft carrier and then we have the uh, uss tripoli here and then there's one more here of uh, uh okinawa so this is the three vessels that is nearby and um they will be probably helping to take care i believe the you can the carrier the aircraft carrier near philippines will actually go nearer to taiwan i believe uh over the next uh 12 hours to make sure that they can actually come closer but of, of course no they will not expose themselves in this area or this area they'll probably go on the other side of taiwan this area here uh, the reason is because they have to protect themselves from uh, missile strikes so there might be also a reason that they do not want to be too close they want to have some kind of standoff uh, distance to protect themselves and they just send more uh, aircraft patrols uh, to fly over the airspace around here so anyway so this is the entire the of the china taiwan focus that you no know, that details all the happenings over the past you know two and a half months all started off from the launch of the carrier and the leak of this battle plan and uh, since then things start to ramp up you can see the visits start to you know cluster together a lot of high level visits and then um, military exercise all ramping up and then uh, you can see legislations and all legislators you know making statements that shows that taiwan uh, needs more help uh, this potential threat coming from china so anyway this is the china taiwan focus and i'll see you in the next update